Hey everyone, it is Shar from Shar's Fascination. And yesterday, over on my Instagram, I promised to do a Bob Ross style painting just to kind of, you know, get back into showing you guys my artistic style of showing you guys what I've learned over the years. Don't mind this. I'm I'm still tidying up and it looks a lot better than it did. Um, the big trash bag is gone. Um, and I do have this. And this is actually how you hold it. You can see it's been used a lot. Um, the only thing I don't have on here is the black because I've actually primed this with black. It's not black gesso. But I have primed this with black. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull this towards me. Now, see, I use acrylic rather than oil. Um, now, acrylic and oil, I will tell you, both take a little time to cure. You will get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty if you're going to paint. That's part of the process. Do always keep in mind that if you get a paint inside, one thing I do is I will keep a paint rag like I have right here. Um, always have a paint rag. Sometimes I have to put my palette down. That's why I have it right here on the foot locker. Um, and just wear a pair of comfy pants. So I'm wearing an old pair of pants that I don't really care about. And if I want, I can just put my paint rag here and beat the devil out of my brush right here. Yes, I did say that. Beat the devil out of it. <laughs> so what I've done with this canvas, as you can see, it is already primed with the black. Is it dry all the way? No. Why? There's a secret blended in here. Is it 11 herbs and spices of a secret? No. <laughs> but I'm about to show you why. And that is a huge surprise for all of you to learn. Now, one thing that I do do, and I know you're like, do do. Wait, that's funny. Um, <laughs> is wet your brush a little, tap it. And then what I'm going to do is, okay, I have all these different colors here. And then you have this up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a little bit of the yellow. Put that right, put that right here, right, put that right here. Don't worry about that dry blue right there. It's not going to pick any of that up. And flip it with a little bit of the white. Don't worry about how much white you pick up. I'm gonna blend that. Right? Pick up a little more white. I mean, you could pull it if you want. But go ahead and just blend that down. And we're gonna clean that because we're gonna need that later. That's for later. You're like, wait, you're not going to use that right now. No, that's for later. No, that is totally for later. And we're going to put that brush down. You're like, wait, you just tricked us. Yes, I did. I just tricked you. Um, <laughs> now we're going to pull that white down. We are. We're going to pull that white down. Get that on both sides of your fan brush which is that paint is now wet. And now I'm going to show you the trick in the middle of the canvas. We're going with X's here in the middle of this canvas. Why? Because when you do this, 
You're going to see, my friends, you're going to see the wonderfulness of some Bob Ross magic. Absolutely, you're going to see some wonderfulness of some Bob Ross style magic right in front of you. And like I said, you know, this is why we keep a paint. Look, this is why we keep a paint rig, okay? Pick up some more of that white and always keep, always, always remember when you're doing this, okay? You're picking up that color for a reason, okay? You're going right in here, okay, with those X's like this for a reason. Because you're bringing out that color in the sky. Absolutely. You're bringing out that color in the sky. Yeah, I know. This time I didn't clean that. And I did that this time on purpose. I want to show you something. Like, right in the middle I did something. Now, there was supposed to be another color right there, but it didn't show. So, I want to show you something else, another technique. Now, when you're doing this, you're literally swooping. You're swooping, which means what? You can create your clouds. You can create your clouds in a specific way by swooping this up like that. Okay? And it, this, since this is acting like there isn't enough white on there, I don't have a lot of white paint. And I'm using acrylic. Sometimes acrylics want to act a little weird. They don't want to behave like an oil sometimes. Uh, I've been known to make an oil look like a water and a water look like an acrylic and vice versa and whatever else. So, um, I had my art teachers tell me that they thought that I always cheated. Like, how can you cheat? Like, when you're doing that in front of them, that's not cheating. It's like teaching them a new technique. <laughs> that's not cheating at all. It's, that's, that's not cheating. It's teaching. Um... Absolutely, that's teaching. So we'll just go ahead and we'll just pull that down into this. And we'll just come back up in here and we'll just go like this. We'll just crisscross that over here. Again, we'll come back over here. And we'll crisscross that. Did I do my my intro? Like, and if I didn't do my intro, I apologize. You know, like we can always redo the intro. Like, I am sorry. Like, and today we're doing something different. I believe I did do my intro. Anyway. But yeah, the other color just doesn't seem to want to come out. That's okay. I'm not mad at that. I did put a deeper color in the middle. But it just doesn't seem to want to come out. And I'm not mad at that. It's kind of like having a happy 
accident. And maybe this is why I was supposed to mix this right here. Because sometimes when you have that happy accident, you take another color and you just bring that out. Bring it out. Bring that out right here. Take this, this yellow right here, this yellow right here, and then bring that out. You have those colors right there. So it's kind of a, a greenish yellow for a purpose. We don't make mistakes. We make happy accidents. And um, we're going to clean that up really good, make sure it's dry. Even with the fan brush, I want you to clean your fan brush really good. Pull that white down, and I want you to come up into this. And just kind of tap it in. And you see how that brightens that up? Just kind of brightens that center just a bit. See how that brightens that just a bit? And you want to do that. You just tap, tap that in. And if you don't want to do it that way, take it on your finger. Just right there in the middle. And do that. There you go. And then just take this and blend it out. And then blend it out. Like I said, you know, we only have happy accidents. And that's all there is to that. Now, are we really going to do anything else to this? Absolutely we are. Because we are adding some clouds into this. And how do we add clouds? This is how we add clouds. Depends on how your day feels. Really is. Depends on how your day feels. It's not the best of weather out here today in South G New Jersey. Da da da. And my uh, tongue is having brain farts. So, um. <laughs> and you just pick up that paint and. And there you go. Maybe your cloud just wants to be like that today. And, and you just tap that in. You can do a whole entire painting with just a fan brush. You could. You could do a whole entire painting with just a fan brush. I've done a lot of paintings with just a fan brush. Um, oh my gosh, the amount of paintings you could do with just a fan brush. And you see how that color comes out with, with your clouds? You, you can just do that and just lay that in like that. You're just like pushing that down. Uh, this is the same effect that you can do with doing waves. And then you just... Go like that. Just go like that. And just like. Just take the end of your brush. And just go like that. Now a lot of people take a dry brush. You can take your dry brush and do this. But I also just. Today I just want to keep a little color on here. Because it's acrylic. And it's not oil. You can do the same trick. Trust me. And um, absolutely, you can do the same exact trick. Bring that over into your light area. And there's a reason why I did this like this to show you guys some little tips and tricks on how to do this. 
Now, I could also use my, um, yeah, I could also use these. I could, if I want a mountain in there, I could use my fan brush to make a mountain. I could use one of these to make a mountain. I, I usually use this to make a mountain. So what I usually do is I'll pull this down and I'll take a little bit of this one right here, right? And I'll take a little lizard and crimson and a little bit of permanent red. Mix those together. You're like, ah, oh, now you got the Bob Ross talking. <laughs> That's what I usually do if I want to do a specific type of mountain. And you, you wipe that clean. Try to wipe it as clean as possible. Um. If you want to do a specific style of mountain. Now I know out here in Jersey you all are not really used to mountain mountains. Like I am because I'm from the west coast. Um, now the type of mountain I'm usually used to has some green in it. Um, also... Um, I'm used to Mount St. Helens before it erupted. <laughs> I was part of that history. Um, we will get back to that on another time. We'll put a little more of that brown in there. Um, so, a little bit of that green. Okay, and then what we'll do, we'll figure out where this, this mountain lives. Okay, your mountain doesn't have to be perfect, but it does live somewhere. Now you can scrub this into the canvas if you want, but now this is acrylic. You have to remember this is not an oil. This is an acrylic. And you just pull it out this way. We will lighten this up. I'll show you how we're going to do this. And we'll just go ahead and set this down here. That's also why I have a piece of plastic sitting on the floor. And we'll just pick our fan brush back up. And that's also why I have these lighter colors on here because, um, well, as you know, most people will just come along and just take this and just pull it out. But you also want to pull it out that way. Don't forget you have two sides of a mountain. And you saw what I did there. I went like that because you can make more than one side of a mountain. Now you saw what I did there. I picked up a little bit of what's right here. And that's this. Now not a lot of people will do that. Because they're a little afraid take a little bit of that and go with that. I 
add that back in for your light, for your highlight on your mountain, and just pull that out. Now, there are reasons why you do this. Never be afraid to do that. Not all mountains are the same. Um, and the reason why I say not all mountains are the same is because we now, my friends, can take these colors here okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of this Indian yellow a little bit of the light yellow all right y'all are always afraid to do this little bit of something here And bring that down on your mountain. Bring that down on your mountain. Now mountains have many colors. Mountains absolutely have many, many colors. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of that green. Bring that over. Mountains have many many colors. Y'all thought, like, what a shark is. Shark is going to show you. What Mr. Ross has been trying to teach people for years. Mr. Bob Ross been trying to teach people this for years. Your mountain, your mountain is forming on your canvas because you're making that happen because you're able to figure out these colors that really belong there. You're able to pick that up. You're able to figure this out out of these colors that come out of nature right up off that mountain. Right up off that mountain ridge. Oh look, there's your mountain. Oh look, where'd that come from? That came from the state of Oregon and Washington State. Morgan Donner should know these mountains. Oh, yeah. Morgan Donner should know these kind of mountains. Oh, yeah. She should be very familiar with these kind of mountains. A little bit of color here and there. you a little more trick with that is uh, when you go to do these types of mountains don't forget you can bring don't be afraid to bring that color to the other side now, your mountains are not always colorful just on that side now a lot of left-handed people are left out now I'm ambidextric so I can bring out that color over here and just Bring it out over here. Bring that out over here. Wh why are we leaving the left-handed people out? Why are we doing that? Let's not leave those left-handed people out. So, 
as a right-handed person, I feel the right to uh, shove something off for the left-handed people with my right hand. <laughs> I, and I have the right to do that with my left. Or I should say with my right to help the left-handed people. I'm not a leftist or right whatever. I just make my choices. Um, <laughs> to be me. Um, so anyway, um, what we do now is we take a clean brush because we always need a clean brush to do this part. And we just blend. We just blend it. All you ever do just blend I just want to show you this just blend it blend this to how you want it this goes with your mind's eye your mind's eye shows you how you want the directional of your mountain to go the directional of your mountain to flow, to flow and go. And then do you see how that color comes out? Now this side of your mountain is going in this direction. This side of your mountain goes in this direction. And then we'll bring that back out and then we'll bring this back out. But there's always a trick to this. And of course, we need to clean that. So, we beat the devil out of it. And we forgot to clean this one. But that one's super wet. So we'll let that one sit for a moment and then we'll pick this one back up. So we'll go back in with some colors. We'll come back in over here. And I just want to go down this mountain like this. Just pick some color up and bring it down. Because I really do want this one to have more color going down this ridge than the darker ridge. So, I want the darker ridge to be over here. That's how I really want this painting in the first place. So. But I did want to show you that technique. Um, just kind of to show you guys uh, how you can pick up your color variation. Okay, and take your ridges out like that. And again, taking the darker colors in like that. And your dry brush. Blend that dark in on your ridge. And then again, Go back in with your lighter color. Blend your colors. And then we're going to come down here. We're going to start down here because now you want to work your way down to your valley. Okay, we're going to work our way down to our valley area now. Because we have our sky, we have our mountains. And now we're going to work our way down to our valley area. So, we still have a little bit of that brown tone in there. I kind of want that in there anyway. And so we can kind of bring that down here. Mix that with a little bit of the green absolutely 
Never be afraid to mix your colors and then bring them along. Okay? Use the edge of your brush and then you see how that goes. You see how that goes? And that goes so quick. And then just clean your brush. One thing I'm never afraid of with cleaning my brush is getting my paint easel dirty. What your paint easel's for. Get that thing dirty. And then one thing you do, you have your distant trees. It's what you do pattern these. Do you have your distant trees? That's what those are. Those are your distant trees or your distant valley. Pick up that color. Pick up a little bit of that darker green. A little bit of that light yellow. And lay in your little distant trees. Just pick that up. Put that in there. Not only does that texture that in, but that's also helping with the valley area. Because when you come in here like this, and you switch up, and you see how I'm going in here like this, right, to make your little distant ridge trees. And then you switch it like this. Watch. I'm going to pick up a little more of that yellow and this yellow because I have more of those. You come in here like this. What are you doing? Is you're starting to make the valley basin. Okay, what you're doing is you're making your land. You're making your land. Okay, right there you're making your land. Now if you really wanted to, and I could have done this like I did with the sky, <coughs> Excuse me, my throat's going dry and I didn't grab an extra bottle of water. Um, I could have made this so it was water, but I did not. So, um, grab a little bit more of that yellow, the green, mix that right there, and then bring this in. Bring that in. Because we will do some trees. I am going to show you this. Because you guys know on this, you know, I can't stop with this uh, particular, um, with this particular camera. So it's like, I will turn you guys to be able to see this a little better. I hope you can. Um, I know the lighting's not the best in here today because it's really windy outside. And, uh, the weather's not the best out there today. So we'll just take this in here and make this valley in here. And then what we're going to do, because we want to add some color into this, we're going to take a little bit of that permanent red, not too much of it, and we're going to add just just a little bit of that in there. 
just a little bit because we don't want too much. And the reason why we don't want too much is because it kind of overcomes everything. But we just want something to bring out a little snap of color. Like, you know, little uh, ridge flowers and stuff. Like, sometimes we like little ridge flowers to bring stuff out. See, like, see how that brings that out? I don't know how you can see that, but, you know, it does bring that out just a little bit. See you pop a few of those in there. Kind of brings that out and nice and everything. It's kind of nice. You got like little filled flowers. Then again, you know. And see like that little snap of... Uh, Red in that is always nice. So let's go ahead and just like blend these. And I really have to buy more color. <laughs> because I'm almost out. And uh, I really am. I'm almost out of paint. And... But I thought I'd bring you guys something nice today. And something different and show you guys also something like different techniques of how you can do this and also right here what I just did right there okay and also you can do that coming down your mountain now I know this looks like a dark painting, but once this actually cures, once a painting actually cures, it's not as dark. That's something a lot of people do not think of. Once a painting cures, it's not as dark. Now the paint I'm actually doing today is a mix between artist, not artist loft, yeah, artist loft and basic. And um, those are, mm, I would say, somewhat expensive paints from uh, Michael's Crafty. yellow in there with that and just like bring that out see like you can just blend that right there on the canvas you don't even really have to worry about that and that's another thing I wanted to show you you can blend that back right there on the canvas if you thought that you made an accident right there on the canvas I wanted to show you you my friends can blend that back right here on the canvas just like that. Snap that color back even with that lighter green right there on the canvas. Did you did you make a mistake? No. And take that lighter green right you can take that yellow and you're going to continue because you're able to just take that and you're able to continue. And why? Because look, look how that color just changed up. And why? because I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. 
You're like, oh, oh. I'm gonna pick up my fan brush and I'm gonna go right in to, to this on one side, okay? Then I'm gonna take this on the other side and we're gonna go like this. Sometimes trees have a hard life. Sometimes they do. Remember, you're dark on one side, you're light on the other, and that's how you do that. It has a little friend, right? Oh, I don't know. Let, let's say its little friend is right about here. Oh, maybe it, maybe that's a big friend. I don't know. It, ha, it, it has a life. And then it has a friend right here. Yeah, they have friends. Trees have friends? <laughs> Do they not? I don't know. We'll figure that out, won't we? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, these trees have friends. You know why? Because they do. Anyway. And some of their friends happen to be these little bushy bushes that live right here. Oh my gosh, see now like you thought I was going to do the trees and I did the bushes first. My gosh, darn it, she tricked us again. I have tricked people with some of my paintings. Like they thought I was gonna complete something else first. And then I totally tricked them. And then they're like, <clears throat> cause I have to clean my fan brush. I do, I have to clean my fan brush and dry it before I can pick up some color. Pick up some color. Pick up some color over here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're gonna pick up some color. And then we're gonna bring that color in right here. And see, this is why we load the brush on both sides. This is absolutely why we load the brush on both sides. I'm telling you guys, my art teachers really did not like me. Except for one, my college art teacher. He, he always wondered, like, why was I even in his class? I, like, I was challenged to take his class. So, he's like, eh, alright, you can be here. I know I'm not done with this, obviously. <laughs> For 
obvious reasons. Because, you know, like, we have this clearing right here that might need a little something. We're not done with that. And might need some, like, you take the fan brush and you go like that. And pick up a little more color and just go like that. I'm telling you guys, there's so much you can do with fan brush. There is. There's so much you can do with fan brush. All the colors that you have on And then also try not to lose your colors in your background. This is kind of looking like Crapitola today. I just haven't really been in the mood. So this painting's going to sort of look like crap. And I apologize for that. I, I really don't have a lot of colors to use. So I do apologize. I just really don't have a lot of paint. So I do apologize for everything getting lost in translation. <laughs> and um, also in the state of Oregon, we have a lot of ferns. So what you're seeing here is my rendition of ferns. So we have a lot of ferns in the forest. Um, in the state of Oregon, a fern is actually a protected plant. Um, that is protected plant life. And I'm actually glad to say that in the state of Oregon, we do protect a plant life. Um, There is several plant life that is protected in Oregon. Um, even though I don't live there anymore, um, we do protect a lot of plant life. If a tree is cut down, 10 trees are actually planted in its place. So, Kudos to the tree companies or the logging companies that um, go in and preserve life. Um, water is life. I wish I had more white paint or this would look a lot better. I wish, I wish I did. My painting would look a lot better if I had a lot more white paint. Let me see if I can do something with this. Um, what am I doing? I already had that on the canvas. I don't know, canvas on there. Um, But, uh, yeah, like I'm saying, you know, like, in the state of Oregon, it's like, we really take pride in, uh, preserving life, preserving the plant, taking, uh, preservation into heart. If a lot more people took preservation into heart, I think that uh, a lot of things would change in the world. Now you see just by hitting this like that, that totally changes the composition of the painting. Totally changes the composition of the background of the painting. Completely like 
composition is changed. Um, would I do the floor of this a little different? Absolutely. So let me pick up a little bit of this here. We can lay that in as some dirt, perhaps. Now, um, in the state of Oregon, sometimes we do get a little bit of red clay. I'm not going to say we get a little bit. We do have some red clay in our land. Um, there's a lot of red clay near the... Uh, Mission Res, and I've actually, when I was a little girl, I actually uh, got used some of that red clay in kindergarten. The other kids didn't like me because um, I didn't make my. Uh, my turkey the way they made their turkey um my turkey looked realistic and theirs looked like their hand uh, <laughs> sorry kids <laughs> yeah I, I don't like how this looks. I probably won't even post this. I'm not sure. I think this looks like crap. That, that's totally up to you. I think this looks like crap. I could change this tree in the snap. I can. I, you know what? Yeah, I can. I can, I can totally change this tree. Doesn't even have to be like that tree. I mean, out in Oregon, we have a lot of different trees. We have um, all sorts of different uh, pine trees. Um, variations, different variations of pine. And, uh, And like I said, I really wish I had a lot of different paint, but right now I do not. And I seriously apologize for that. Or my painting would be looking a whole lot better than it does right now. Right now it looks like total crap. I gave my other paints to a kid because she said she was bored and come to find out she has so much paint it's ridiculous. Or I would have kept my paint. You know, hey, you try to be nice. Kids these days, right? You know what? I suppose this is what it would be like in the mountains at night. A mountainous night. Yes.
Yes, we shall call this a mountainous night. Yes. I am adding in the little bits of yellow to kind of pick up a little something here and there. Um, if you've seen my other paintings, which I'll try to link, um, Labor Family Property, Darby Creek, that that's a beautiful painting. Um, I'll try to about that one. This one looks like total crap. I'm not in the mood for this. No. I'm not in the mood for this. And I really like everything needs to go back to normal. This looks like crap. I'm not in the mood for anything right now. I have people trying to pressure me into doing stuff and I'm not I'm not one to be pressured. Please don't pressure me into doing stuff. I hate that. Don't don't do it, people. Like, I hate that. And it doesn't it doesn't help me. And um it doesn't make me feel right. Um and right now I have a person trying to pressure me into do some, doing something. And um, just just stop it. Just stop it. Because pretty soon the answer is no. And I'm just going to put that out there like that. Pretty soon the answer is just no. You know what? Maybe I'll just put this like here like it's supposed to be the moon. You know what I mean? I'll just put this like it's supposed to be the moon. And this is still an ugly painting. So, um, this is ugly. It's ugly. It didn't turn out how I wanted. Um, and I apologize for that. I'm better than this. Um, I want to cry. I've done better. I'm out of our supplies. I really am. I gave up my art supplies, my new art supplies to a kid. Lied. Um, obviously wasn't out of art supplies, but I felt sorry for that kid. Gave up my art supplies just to find out that the kid wasn't out of art supplies. <sighs> Oh. And I'm the one that needed the art supplies, so I apologize for the crappy painting. Anybody out there trying to pressure me into anything, you can pretty much go F yourself. I'm just about done with people trying to pressure me into things. Just, just stop. Just stop. I don't have time for you. I just don't. I don't have time for you. I have time for my life right now. I'm about to go into a seizure. 
Um, as, <clears throat> as for my good people, I want you to stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive. Oh, and that's a pimple. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, stay blessed. And I gotta wash my laundry. Sorry for that. Um, and I will see you in the next one, like I said. Um, sorry for that. That that just I don't know. Maybe after it dries it'll look better. I don't know. It just doesn't look that great right now. I think it looks like crap. I don't know what you think. I just don't think it looks all that great. I really don't. I've done better. I really have. I've done better paintings than this. Um, I really have. And the one part in the middle was supposed to be better than this and it didn't show through and because I'm running out of art supplies so I'll see you guys later all right love my good people